At number 10, Marsquake. On May 5th, 2018, NASA launched the InSight Mars Lander, and it was designed to give the planet its first thorough checkup since being formed. This technology allows us to collect lots of data, like hearing what's going on inside of the planet. Compared to Earth, the interior of Mars is fairly quiet, but it still experiences quakes underneath the surface. The InSight Lander is equipped with a seismometer called Seismic Experiment for Interior Structure, or they just call it size, which picks up on the different vibrations of the planet and allows scientists to hear what the heck is going on inside. In April 2019, the size got its first hit, which turned out to be, for the first time ever, a Mars quake. This is the first recorded trembling that appears to have come from inside the planet as opposed to being caused by forces above the surface, like wind. Most people are familiar with quakes on Earth, which are caused by the moving of tectonic plates. Mars does not have tectonic plates like the Moon, but they both still experience quakes. In this case, they are caused by a continual process of cooling and contraction that creates stress. The stress then builds over time until strong enough to break the crust. The audio of the quake is very ominous sounding, almost like a really strong wind, but since space is so silent, it makes things super ominous. It's not so terrifying until you remember it's coming from inside of the planet. Number 9. The Sun Considering space is such a quiet place, it really seems like everything in it makes a lot of noise. The Sun is no exception. I was totally happy before this video not thinking about the Sun making noise, but now I'm afraid it's all I will be able to think of. The Sun has so much energy coming out of it that it vibrates on multiple frequencies at once, which then cause a humming sound. To me, the Sun sounds like one of those singing bowls used in meditation. It's almost soothing until you remember that you're listening to the Sun vibrate. NASA explained how we're able to hear the Sun and basically when anything material moves, waves travel through it, and the same thing happens inside the Sun. Those waves are bouncing around the Sun, and if our eyes were sensitive enough, we could actually see this jiggle. Since our human eyes are so useless and weak, scientists turn that jiggle into a sound. Like Mars, we want to know what's going on inside, and thanks to the Sun vibrating at many different frequencies, we can use those vibrations to look inside. Now scientists can see huge rivers of solar material flowing around and are starting to finally understand the layers of the Sun. Number 8. Crossing Saturn's Rings October 15, 1997 marks the day that the Cassini Huygens was launched. Commonly just called Cassini was a space research mission by NASA, the European Space Agency, and the Italian Space Agency to send a space probe to study the planet Saturn and its systems, including its rings and natural satellites. Cassini was the fourth space probe to visit Saturn and the first to enter its orbit, where it stayed from 2004 to 2007. During this mission, one of the things they discovered, unfortunately, was what it sounds like to cross the planet's rings. Saturn's rings are made up of billions of small chunks of ice and rock coated with other materials such as dust. The audio clip sounds mainly like static, but as it goes, you can hear more action and the sound becomes more intense. It's almost like the sound of a really heavy rain. Cassini's initial dive into the void of Saturn's rings was on April 26, 2017, when the sounds were recorded. Not only was this our first time hearing what this section of space sounds like, it's the first time a spacecraft has ever ventured into the gap between the planet and its rings. The sound is so loud, it's hard to believe that scientists were surprised to see just how empty it was. At number 7, Earth Whistle. This sound is terrifying because it sounds like something straight out of a video game. Space is far from empty, and as we are learning today, it's not very quiet either. Space contains energetic charged particles governed by magnetic and electric fields, and it behaves like nothing we've ever experienced on Earth before. Particles are continually tossed to and fro by the motion of various electromagnetic waves waves known as plasma waves. The plasma waves create a rhythmic noise that, with the right tools, we can hear across space. Basically, the waves create distinct sounds depending on the plasma they travel through. For example, the region tight around the Earth called the plasmosphere is pretty dense with cold plasma. Waves traveling inside the region might sound much different to those outside of it. Beyond the plasmosphere where it's warmer, waves can create a high-pitched chirping sound like a flock of noisy birds. If you look up Earth Whistle, it sounds like the classic laser gun sound effect or like crickets and frogs at night. Either way, it sounds fake, and it's hard to believe it was recorded right by Earth in space. Number 6. Jupiter Everyone thinks aliens live on Mars. Due to its similarities to Earth, maybe it is the one housing another life form. I would agree it makes a lot of sense that aliens are hanging out on Mars. That was until I heard what it sounds like on Jupiter. I mentioned earlier Cassini, the spacecraft that was sent on a mission to check out Saturn. Well, Cassini had a historic 20-year mission to Saturn, and while in space it stopped by Jupiter to receive a gravitational 
additional boost en route to its final destination. Cassini flew by Jupiter in January 2001 while it was flying by, it captured some spooky alien like radio signals. Of all the sounds on this list, the ones on Jupiter sound the most like aliens. The other sounds were spooky, but this one sounds almost animated, perhaps like a conversation even. Apparently, the sound comes from waves that were derived from an interaction of the magnetic field that surrounds Jupiter and the solar wind of particles speeding away from the sun. At number five, unusually close signals. There are bright, fleeting blasts of radio waves coming from the vicinity of a nearby galaxy, and they are only pushing one of astronomy's biggest mysteries even further from an answer. The repeating bursts of energy seem to be coming from an ancient group of stars called a globular cluster. What's so special about that? Well, it's one of the last places astronomers expected to find them. These extremely bright and extremely brief bursts of radio waves are known as fast radio bursts, or FRBs. Originating billions of light years away, the FRBs have defied explanation since they were first spotted in 2007. Based on observations, scientists infer that the bursts are powered by young, short lived cosmic objects called magnetars. That was until a couple of years ago when a fast radio burst was discovered and traced to a globular cluster about 11.7 million light years away near the neighboring spiral galaxy M81. At number four, space roar. In space, nobody can hear you scream, but scientists did pick up on what they described as a roar. I don't know if you could find a scarier sound coming from space. Back in 2006, scientists began looking for distant signals in the universe using a complex instrument attached to a huge balloon that was sent to space. The instrument is called the Absolute Radio Meter for Cosmology, Astrophysics, and Diffuse Emissions, or just Arcade. The Arcade was able to pick up radio waves from the heat of distant stars, but none of them were expecting what they heard next. The instrument listened from a height of about 23 miles, and it picked up a signal that was six times louder than what it had originally been expected. They tried to source the loud sound, but soon discovered it was too loud to be early stars and far louder than the predicted combined radio emission from distant galaxies, so basically scientists were stumped. Even today, we still have no idea what the source of the roar was. Apparently on top of not knowing the source, the mysterious sound is so loud that it's making the efforts to search for signals from the first stars formed after the Big Bang quite difficult. It's just out there covering up our view of early stars and being emitted by something we can't yet imagine. Number three, space heartbeat mystery. Mysterious radio signals from space have been known to repeat, but a few years back, for the first time, researchers noticed a pattern in a series of bursts coming from a single source half a billion light years away from Earth. Fast radio bursts, or FBRs, which I mentioned before, are millisecond long bursts of radio waves in space. Individual radio bursts emit once and don't repeat, but repeating FRBs are known to send out the waves multiple times. Usually, when they repeat, it's sporadic or in a cluster, according to previous observations. Between September 16, 2018 and October 30, 2019, researchers with the Canadian Hydrogen Intensity Mapping Experiment, or CHIME, detected a pattern in bursts occurring every 16.35 days. Over the course of four days, the signal would release a burst or two each hour, then it would go silent for another 12 days. In 2019, CHIME detected the sources of eight new repeating fast radio bursts, including this signal. The repeating signal was traced to a massive spiral galaxy around 5 500 million light years away. Researchers hope that by tracing the origin of these mysterious bursts, they would be able to determine what caused them, but to this day, scientists still have no idea. I know I mentioned aliens a lot, but come on. If anything is another life form trying to get in communication with us, it has to be this. What else would be able to stay so consistent in space? Number two, Jupiter's bow shock. Well, we all know now that I think Jupiter is home to aliens already, but after hearing Jupiter's bow shock, I don't know if I'm more or less convinced. The sun emits a steady stream of charged solar solar wind, which can be repelled by a very strong magnetic force, like that of the magnetic field of a larger planet. When the solar wind meets a strong magnetic force surrounding a planet, it's deflected and all its energy of motion is converted to thermal energy. This energized region is known as a bow shock. The name is borrowed from a similar phenomenon in aerodynamics. The sound of passing through this region was recorded by the Voyager spacecraft. Voyager 1 and 2 were both launched into space in 1977 to take advantage of a favorable alignment of Jupiter and Saturn. When the spacecraft encountered the bow shock, there was a very sudden burst of intense low frequency emissions extending over a wide range of frequencies. To me, the bow shock on Jupiter sounds like the little aliens are just chilling, chattering away, and then explosion. It sounds like something big blows up, and the tone of it is much deeper than the high pitch of Jupiter itself. Once again, remembering that the sound was recorded in space makes it even crazier. And at number one, 
black hole. Okay, of all the sounds you can hear from space, a black hole is the scariest. I think also just in general, black holes are one of the scariest things that exist. First of all, what the heck is a black hole? Well, according to NASA, a black hole is a place in space where gravity pulls so much that even light cannot get out. Horrifying. The gravity is so strong because the matter has been squeezed into a tiny space. This can happen when a star is dying. Because no light can get out, people can't see black holes. They are invisible. Space telescopes with special tools can help find black holes. The special tools can see how stars that are very close to black holes act differently than other stars. The sound that a black hole makes is even more haunting. I've never heard a more fitting sound effect for a spine chilling scene in a horror movie. It sounds like what I think hundreds of ghosts and spirits would sound like if they were to circle around a spooky dungeon. Maybe it's just me, but I seriously think it's the sound they used in Harry Potter when they were at Azkaban. Kicking off the list at number 10, glyphosate. We'll start this wacky list off with perhaps one of the coolest things that I've seen online. Also one of the weirdest things for sure. This was posted by Reddit user Thunderbolt and it was in tons of communities. I've seen this video pop up numerous places. The internet knows me so well. It looks otherworldly. I thought this video was in slow-mo. Nope. Take a look. I had to watch it a few times. This looks like it's in slow motion, but when the camera moves away, that's clearly not the case. So what's going on here? What am I looking at? What in the avatar is going on? This is turbulent flow and the speed matches that of the camera's shutters. It's kind of like footage of a helicopter. You know, sometimes it'll fly through the air and it looks like it's just still just doing this. It's the weirdest thing ever. Really, it's the propellers that are matching the camera's shutter speeds. It's odd, but in this case, it's really odd. Imagine sending this to your boss to check in at work. Yeah, the ectoplasm's in slow-mo again, so. It's gonna be a while. Send. Number nine, player two has entered. I saw this video again a while back online as I spend most of my time on Reddit after midnight, you know, as do the rest of us. And for months now, nobody can figure out what is happening in this video. Take a look. <laughs> Was he running beside the truck? How, how did he just appear? Was he hanging onto the side of the truck like Tom Cruise in Mission Impossible? How is he so calm, cool, and collect? He waits a second after the truck pulls away. He waits a second, almost as if he's still loading. Hmm, maybe some other dimensions going on here. People are saying it's an edit, others are saying the van door was open, and then others are arguing in the comments about which doors belong on which vans. Then there's also an argument about wheels and doors, but I think that's something that's separate, that's totally separate. Whichever universe this man came from, uh, welcome, first of all, and you've caused so many headaches already, so. Great start. Number eight, too many beetles. Before you get grossed out, I don't mean that type of beetle, although that would be pretty bad as well. Bleh, gross. This video was shared to the lovely world of, you guessed it, Reddit. User H. Mumberto was having just a normal day, but there's like six of the same car that appear out of nowhere. There's the exact same Volkswagen Beetle, same color and everything. Two are parked, one's driving into town, another is driving out of town, and one is lost. Can't figure out which town they're in. I hope they're filming a movie or something here because this is honestly pretty creepy. I would film this as well, for sure. This is like the Truman Show in real life. Oh God, that movie messed me up when I was younger. If this was me, I wouldn't be nearly as calm as whoever's filming this video. That's so many white beetles just around in one small area. That's like in GTA 5, when you get in one car, then all of a sudden every car around you is the exact same. You're like, what's going on here? It's trippy, it's very noticeable. I couldn't imagine seeing this in real life, so thank you for sharing. That being said, it's not bizarre for some places to manufacture the same model of a car, but this, I don't know, it's creepy. This is like definitely a glitch in the matrix. Number seven, three dogs. This is the most bizarre video I've seen in a while, straight up. This was almost number one, but we get into more of the, you know, cosmic stuff for number one, so, you know. Animals follow each other. This is a known fact in nature, but this right here is next level. At first, I thought these were three cats, because, you know, cats are a bit more insane than dogs. You know, if I had to bet on which animal would run into a glass window three times in a row, I would probably say a cat. Cats are wild. They'll stare at nothing for like 42 minutes. Creepy, I don't like that. This video shows three dogs confusing the hell out of a staff. It looks like a clinic of some sorts or a hospital. One dog runs into the glass, it's okay, and it runs off. Another dog does the same thing, it's okay, runs off. And then in comes a third dog, just to continue confusing the staff and myself watching this video. The fact that they're all the same color and size and hits the same window, I mean, something's going on here. This is actually crazy. Maybe it's one dog and it's just really, really fast. It's just doing laps. Number six, the cold spot. Okay, getting more cosmic now into the 
these dimensions and parallel universes. Okay, so strap in. In 2004, NASA's WMAP satellite saw one of the most mysterious and perhaps one of the most ominous findings in science history, the cold spot. And no, I don't mean your ex's heart. Nothing is colder than that. That's, that's another list. We'll save that one. The cold spot is, for starters, massive. When the universe was created a good, you know, 14 billion years ago, it left some cosmic microwave background for us to explore and, you know, just live in. Specifically, this one really cold spot of radiation. While the rest of the universe expands and cools down over time in millions of years, this area has remained colder than any of the surrounding area. Just radiation left over from the very beginning of our universe. Another theory by scientists is that this cold spot is a result of collision between two different universes. Which is interesting. That's when things start to get a little mm -hmm, mind bendy. Could this spot be an icy cold doorway into another bubble universe? Perhaps the first evidence that proves the multiverse theory? Aside from the show Loki? Maybe. We'll have to see. Just gotta stick around and wait for something to happen. To have that collider that may or may not help, that I may or may not talk about later on. Number five, the Milky Sea Phenomenon. I've seen this with my very own eyes, and if you get a chance to see bioluminescence in the ocean, do it. What an odd request. Everyone's like, okay, finally, it's about time. I'm gonna do it. The Milky Sea Phenomenon was first observed back in 1864. Captain Raphael Semez journaled it aboard his CSS Alabama, and he had no idea what the hell he was looking at. Even today, we don't fully understand how bioluminescence works in nature. So this captain, obviously was shaken after seeing something like this. He wrote about passing from the deep blue waters into a patch of water so bright that it startled him. A startled explorer. Ah, yes, nothing worse than that. He wrote down his thoughts and feelings. Remember, this is 1864, long before the movie Avatar was out in theaters, so this is all new to human beings. Captain Raphael wrote, the whole face of nature seemed to have changed. With a little stretch of the imagination, the CSS Alabama might have been conceived to be a phantom ship lit up by the sickly and unearthly glare of a phantom sea. That's what I'm gonna write down. What am I looking at. Guy thought he drifted into Pandora. That's quite the quote, Captain Semez. Thank you for sharing with all those years ago. I don't think he's watching this video. That's not an exaggeration either. This phenomenon is something out of a movie. It's so alien. Bioluminescence is part of the reason for this ghostly bright blue appearance, but sailors who have experienced this say there's something sinister about it as well. So who really knows? To this day, we don't fully understand how bioluminescence works, but it's continuing to grow and blow our minds. We just discovered a glowing shark recently. Yeah, just a new shark, a new glowy shark. That's what we're dealing with now. So this captain would be surprised if he saw what we have now. The Milky Sea phenomenon can span around 100,000 square miles. So again, this one's pretty large and it can last for a few nights. So I don't blame these sailors for getting spooked. In 2005, we got low orbit satellites to snap a pic of this phenomenon and on a list of otherworldly dimensions, this is perhaps the most otherworldly event that happens on our planet. Number four, Large Hadron Collider. We can't have a list on other dimensions and not talk about the Large Hadron Collider. This project is testing the laws of physics. We mentioned earlier the remnants left over from the Big Bang and all that. Well, scientists are currently trying to make another Big Bang. Well, a little bang. A smaller bang. Hopefully a smaller bang. This project was put in motion by CERN. They're trying to identify what dark matter is, seeing how, you know, it makes up a lot of our universe. And the project also aims at trying to discover tiny black holes. And if you've seen Interstellar, uh, this could mean a few things if done correctly. We could maybe open a door to a parallel universe. So us humans are like, eh, you know what? Let's try and smash some particles together, see what happens. So now we have a 16 mile long underground ring that blasts proton beams close to the speed of light. Then they make them collide into each other, ideally creating a black hole. How fun for us. The project hasn't been successful yet, but when it is, I feel like we'll know. We'll have an idea, you know? We'll have a feeling in our hearts, or we might turn into spaghetti instantly. Well, no, something worked, or didn't, for that matter. Number three, the Philadelphia Experiment. Perhaps one of the most bizarre tales when it comes to other dimensions. And this one has credibility behind it too. It pops up in my Reddit a lot, a lot. The 1943 Philadelphia Experiment. If you haven't heard of it, I'm sorry. This is, gonna, this is gonna upset you, maybe. This World War II conspiracy theory takes place on the USS Eldridge, this destroyer-class ship, and they were conducting these secret experiments aboard this ship to gain power over naval warfare. One of these experiments was to create this technology that makes the ships invisible on radar. That's an important note. Invisible on radar, not like... But when the generators were fired up to try this, the hull apparently lit up with this green and blue light, then the ship actually disappeared. Invisible IRL, not just... Radar. It was then seen at a naval shipyard in Virginia before the same thing happened again, and then it appeared back in Philadelphia, apparently. This sounds intense as is, but when you hear about the crew on board, it gets 
Pretty scary. Some of course went mad after the dimensional dip, while others had physical effects from the cosmic commute. Yeah, some haunting details in that one. Some dude's arm was like, just in the wall or something. It was horrible, I can't even talk about it on YouTube. It's gross. Number two, Tartarus. Okay, we're getting a bit historical in the other dimensions for this one now. Number two and one, we're getting deep. Greek mythology, here we go. According to Greek mythology, I'm talking like way back in 700 BC, Tartarus was a deep abyss. A dungeon, really, full of, you know, suffering and torture and everything bad that you can think of, just, you know, probably in there. This place full of suffering, of course, resides in Hades. If you played the game Hades, you know exactly where I'm talking about. It's the second world, it's so hard. Hades is a realm where the dead go after their, you know, time is run out. It doesn't mean that it's a fiery abyss per se, that's just where Tartarus comes in. Tartarus is where the underworld devil theme kicks in. Plato wrote about these souls of the dead and how they were judged and after they, you know, would have to cross a river of the dead and all that stuff. So that's definitely some other dimension stuff that we're talking about there when it comes to the religious history. If you were a great human being, you were of course judged as so. And subsequently, you were sent to Tartarus. The bad place. In Greek poet Hesiod's Theogony, Tartarus was offspring of Aether and Gaia. They were the third of the primordial deities. Even Zeus mentioned this place in the Iliad. Zeus states that Tartarus is as far beneath Hades as heaven is high above Earth. So that's a lot of dimensions. We're in the middle right now, which is nice. I want to stay here. I'm like, uh, maybe. Definitely not. Here. We're good. And finally, number one, Duat. The Egyptian afterlife. Yeah, we don't have photos of this one, but we have some really old art, which is almost more compelling. Otherwise known as the Fields of Reeds or Fields of Offering, Duat is a place ancient Egyptians believed came after life. In fact, they believed that life on Earth was just a mere fraction of an eternal life that we're meant to live. Not ending in death, but rather forever lasting in peace and harmony. Doesn't that sound great? We love that. They believed there was more to the body failing. You know, the soul must continue, it must go on. Somewhere. Born on Earth, believing in the gods and the deities known as the Seven Hathers, once death did arrive, you're just entering another realm. But hopefully the gods have judged you so you can live in this paradise realm known as the Fields of Reeds. Not do what? You want that one, definitely not the other one. The thing is, you don't just pass on and then enter this nice realm where you can drink wine and, you know, two-step with your relatives. No, you have to earn your spot. You have to show the gods that you're a good human being. This paradise is just really a mirror image of your previous mortal life. So if you're not kind to others now, well, this field of dreams can easily turn into a field of eternal nightmares. Ancient Egyptians' beliefs in hell predates Jewish, Christian, and Islamic visions. The concept of hell in ancient Egypt predates the concept of hell in more of these modern religions which is kind of baffling. With the god Osiris believed to be the lord of said underworld, we have the coffin text and the book of the dead now to study up while we're still, you know, living like lousy mortals. Maybe the Egyptians were onto something here. Maybe the sky really is an iron container of water for the gods. Maybe we have to earn our spot in this cosmos. I don't know, one way or another, there's definitely more than one dimension. Either cats or Egyptian afterlifes. We're gonna see one of the two. Number 10, NASA hacked. So first off, how do things like this from NASA even manage to get leaked? Well, apparently, by British guys like Gary McKinnon hacking into their system. Between the years 2001 and 2002, Gary broke into 97 different government computers, believing NASA was hiding signs of alien life because of thousands of pictures of UFOs he found hidden away. A former NASA employee had said that satellite images were checked for UFOs and deleted if they showed any evidence, and Gary decided he wanted to break into NASA in order to validate the these claims. He says that he found four different folders titled filtered, unfiltered, processed, and raw. He says that his slow internet connection only made him able to download one image before he lost access to the rest of them. The picture apparently being a clear image of a cigar shaped spacecraft. Gary believes that NASA is hiding a wealth of UFO evidence from the public. Number 9. Edgar Mitchell Astronaut Edgar Mitchell landed on the moon with the Apollo 14 mission, and he also believed that aliens helped prevent a conflict between the United States and Russia. He claimed that top military officials were hiding evidence of unidentified flying objects, and the fact that they were apparently often spotted hovering over White Sands testing range in New Mexico. In 2015, he said, White Sands was a testing ground for atomic weapons, and that's what the extraterrestrials were interested in. They wanted to know about our military military capabilities. My own experience talking to people has made it clear the ETs had been attempting to keep us from going to war and help create peace on Earth. He stated that the military had given him loads of information on aliens and their interactions with Earth, and after he left NASA, he dedicated his life and studies to looking into extraterrestrials.
extraterrestrial existence. Number 8. Mars Photos A man named Richard Hoagland believes that NASA knows a lot more about Mars than they're letting on. He believes that astronauts have been to Mars and that there is a plethora of evidence of alien life on Mars that NASA is insistent on covering up. During the Viking 1 orbit in 1976, NASA released various photographs of the surface of Mars, and some of them seem to show various different structures and one that apparently even looked like the Sphinx. This led people to believe that these structures had been built by aliens who lived on the Red Planet. Years later, in 1998, NASA took more pictures to debunk the theory, showing only rocks. But Richard and others believe that this is them trying to hide the truth and shrinking the structures that were previously on the planet. He also pulled up a NASA commissioned report from 1960 that recommended any future discoveries of alien life be hidden from the public so as not to disrupt the evolutionary flow of the century. Number 7. Sun Object Last video, I talked about NASA cutting off their ISS feed when people believed that they saw a UFO falling towards the Earth. This one is a similar scenario, except it came from footage of the Sun. In May of 2012, a YouTube user posted a video of a mysterious object seen flying near the Sun in NASA's broadcast. The video zooming in on the pyramid-shaped object that many believed to be some sort of alien craft flying near the Sun. A day later, NASA shut down the video feed. In a second video, the user said, This is a cover up to prevent us from seeing these things again. NASA must have seen this video and started making plans to change the way you and I are allowed to view it. NASA are clearly trying to stop us looking at the sun. Alien deniers may say that this is just some sort of camera glitch or sun flare, but I think we all know the truth. People telling you not to look at the sun is actually just propaganda, so we don't see the aliens. And I'm just gonna say quickly for legal reasons that I do not actually condone staring into the sun. Number 6. The Cube This also isn't the only case of NASA cutting off the sun livestream after a suspicious activity. It happened just this year in May as well. On May 2nd at around 1 in the afternoon, a large black cube appeared to come out of the sun, visible for about 2 seconds. A glitch then appeared on the livestream covering a large part of it, and after it clears, the cube is gone. An expert posted this to YouTube going over the footage and claims that this is evidence of some sort of alien spaceship coming out of the sun. Perhaps they have a secret alien base in there. Also, I say expert because he is a self-proclaimed extraterrestrial expert and honestly, I'm going to start calling myself that as well. You guys are watching a video from an expert now, people. Most people in the comments claim that this was just some sort of square-shaped solar flare, while well, another even claimed it was the manifestation of an angel gaining power from the sun. Number 5. Evidence Scale This one is not so much leaked, but was instead part of an announcement that NASA was going to become more serious about trying to discover life on other planets. They announced that they are going to have a scale to measure extraterrestrial evidence so that it's not as black and white as life or no life. Proposed by NASA Chief Scientist Jim Green, the scale includes seven different levels levels, which ranks evidence of life based on their environment and the opinions of the scientific community at large. The highest levels on the scale are of course level 6, verifying signs of life with several different instruments, and level 7, and on different locations on the world. They said in a statement, We need a better way to share the excitement of our discoveries and demonstrate how each discovery builds on the next, so that we can bring the public and other scientists along on the journey. This new eagerness to bring people along on the journey of discovery could be a sign that they're warming us up to revealing aliens. Number 4. Meteorite In 2011, a NASA scientist came out claiming that they had found legitimate evidence of alien life. This being from fossils inside a meteorite that landed on Earth. Richard Hoover said that he found evidence of what is basically microscopic little alien bugs, or as the science people call it, 
filaments and other structures that appear to be fossils of algae known as cyanobacteria, little alien bugs. Laboratory tests done found no evidence that they were the remains of Earth-based organisms, despite being slightly similar to organisms that have been found in the waterways of Spain. Hoover says that the lack of nitrogen, which is essential for life on Earth, proves that they are the remains of extraterrestrial life forms that grew on the parent bodies of the meteorites when liquid water was present, long before the meteorites entered the Earth's atmosphere. This isn't the first time that this sort of evidence has been found on meteorites and it probably won't be the last. Number 3. Anonymous We know that the infamous Gary McKinnon managed to hack into the NASA databases and find secret UFO pictures, but did you know that the group known as Anonymous did it as well? In 2017, they made a 12 and a half minute long YouTube video where they claimed to have gained access to secret NASA information, telling people that NASA was covering up the discovery of alien life. They said that the organization had recently found 219 new planet candidates, 10 having very similar conditions to Earth. Because of this, the group came to believe that NASA was either incredibly close to finding alien life or had already found it. They also stated that this was a sign NASA was getting closer and closer to revealing the truth about aliens. And while many people brushed it off as being ridiculous, we now know that NASA has just revealed their new UFO study, so Anonymous may have been closer to the truth than we thought. Number 2. Black Knight Satellite Alright, now let's get into some stuff that is a little more conspiratorial than usual, if that's even possible, and various different ways that people believe NASA is trying to cover stuff up, but apparently not doing a good enough job. There is a conspiracy that there is a satellite called the Black Knight Satellite which was set up by aliens more than 12,000 years ago in order to spy on humans. Photos from the first shuttle trip to the International Space Station in 1998 appeared to show a large black object hovering over Earth, and people believed it was the first photographic evidence of the Black Knight satellite. All previous evidence from years before were just things like radio signals. They also believed that back in the early 1900s, Nikola Tesla actually picked up signals from the Black Knight. Whether or not you actually believe in the existence of the satellite spying on us apparently doesn't matter anymore as it was reportedly shot down by the Illuminati in 2017. Number 1. Hollow Earth Alright, this one's not so much about aliens, but trust me on this, I am a self-proclaimed extraterrestrial expert, okay? In 2016, one YouTube user suggested that NASA was trying to cover up the existence of something at the North and South Poles. Old satellite images of Earth from space appear to apparently show some sort of a massive hole at each end of the Earth, what they claim to be an entrance. If you're not so Sold on the flat earth theory, then let me introduce you to hollow earth. As its name suggests, the truth is apparently that the inside of the earth is hollow and actually contains inner earth complete with its own sun. Explorers have apparently seen the inner earth firsthand when flying over the north pole. So this is just a cool crazy conspiracy and it doesn't actually really relate to aliens, but I just wanted to talk about it. So as an alien expert, I'm just going to say that the inner earth is actually where all the aliens live and they control us from the inside. Starting off this countdown, we have the secret entrances. Just last year, a man claimed to have found three hidden entrances that lead to Area 51. He discovered this after using Google Earth. He compared images of the base from different time periods. In one particular area in 1998, there seems to be no roads or entrance. Satellite pictures of that same location in 2005, 2010, and 2013 show a road and a dead end with what looks like an entrance and tunnel carved into a mountain. In fact, at the dead end, there appears to be cars parked there. Seems unusual for people to just park there, because what is around for them to do? Wander the barren plain alone? No, they're parking their cars there and then entering Area 51 through this secret entrance. In our ninth spot, we have the alien craft. What I'm about to show you is a leaked video and some photos from Area 51 of an alien spacecraft test. The video features a flying object hovering in the sky and moving in ways that other crafts definitely don't do. This was recorded on May 15, 2017 and then was leaked years later. If this isn't actually a UFO, then what could it be? 
That's what's baffling people. The way it just moves up and down and side to side that quickly is very strange, especially because of its size. What do you think though? Is this proof that Area 51 has gotten their hands on an alien spacecraft? Moving on to number 8, we have the transportation of a UFO. When this next photo was leaked online, it was met with a number of conspiracy theories. So this is the image of the CIA transporting a large part for one of their top secret projects. In fact, when this was getting transported, the CIA sealed off the entire highway. And I'm sure you can see why this was met with a number of conspiracy theories. Like look at the shape of the thing that they're transporting. That is definitely a UFO or part of a UFO spaceship. Now this is where it gets even more interesting. Somehow a group of bikers made it onto the road. When they were stopped by some soldiers, they asked what they were transporting. And the soldier said they found a UFO up in the mountains. Now apparently he said this jokingly, but who knows? In our seventh spot we have the Tic Tac UFO. Last year, another UFO was spotted near Area 51. This one was given the name the Tic Tac UFO because of its Tic Tac shape and white or bright appearance. So this spacecraft was caught on footage by a person driving along near Area 51. He was driving along the extraterrestrial highway, that's the name given to the highway in Nevada, as a number of UFOs have been seen by drivers while on this route. At first, the driver thought that what he was seeing was just a cloud. When he got closer to it, he realized that it was definitely a craft of some kind. Later on, alien hunter Scott Waring confirmed that the UFO was in fact alien in origin. Also, the area in which he was driving through had a number of wind farms in the area. Turns out that in the past a lot of UFOs have been spotted around wind farms and one UFO even crashed into a windmill many years back. Some say this is because aliens are fascinated with human technology. In our sixth spot we have Stephen Barron. In 2016, UFO hunter Steve Barron captured video and photographic evidence of another alien spacecraft close to Area 51. These were taken near his home in Las Vegas, Nevada, an hour drive from Area 51. Using a night vision camera, Steve head out to Red Rock Canyon to try and capture a UFO. The first couple of hours, there was nothing. Then he saw mysterious weird flashing lights appear over a mountain. He said this in regards to the UFO and its lights and I quote, first one, then two, then more and more. They put on a spectacular show. I am glad I was patient because the show they put on kept getting better and better. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the CIA spy plane. In 2011, Los Angeles Times journalist Annie Jacobson published a book called Area 51, an uncensored history of America's top secret military base. In the book, she included a number of never before seen photos of the base. The first one I want to show you is of a CIA spy plane. This photo shows an A-12 ox cart hidden behind a barrier at Area 51. This was a top secret plane that was created to reach high speeds and altitudes. During the first three years of testing this plane, everything was kept top secret. In fact, the pilots weren't even allowed to tell their wives what they were working on. On May 24th, 1963, during a test flight, the plane crashed. The pilot, Ken Collins, was fine but had to eject himself out of the plane. But afterwards, the CIA actually injected him with sodium pentothal, aka truth serum, to then interrogate him after the crash. That's crazy. In our fourth spot, we have the rare photo. So this photo was also featured in Annie Jacobson's book, Area 51, an uncensored history of America's top secret military base. In fact, this is a very rare photo that has never been published before. It was published for the first time in Annie's book, and that's it. This photo is an aerial view of Area 51 taken in 1964. I don't know why it was kept a secret for so long or how Annie got her hands on it, but she did and decided to share it with the world. Moving on at number 3, we have the early U-2 spy planes. In the early 1950s, at the peak of the Cold War, the CIA began to develop planes that they wanted to reach an altitude of 70,000 feet to avoid detection against Soviet radar. This gave birth to the U-2 spy planes that you see here in this picture. This photo was taken in Area 51 in 1956, and pictures a worker standing on the plane's wing. 
Sadly, at least three pilots lost their lives during test flights, including two at Area 51 and one at an Air Force base in Germany. Coming in at number two, we have Boyd Bushman. Shortly before his death, former Area 51 engineer Boyd Bushman revealed that he encountered aliens while working at Area 51. In a video, Bushman shows a number of mysterious photos to the camera, including one of an alien and a number of photos of the alien's appendages. We have a total of at least 18 that exist and operate with our facility. Now, many people believe that this man is telling the truth. Why? Because he had nothing to gain or lose by sharing his story. Plus, an interrogator with the police studied Boyd's movements and speech pattern during this interview and he said that it appears as if he's telling the truth. In the interview, he said that Area 51 has at least 18 of these aliens in their facility. He also claims that there are two groups of aliens. One group are called the Wranglers, the others are called the Rustlers. The aliens that are considered Wranglers are friendly and have a better relationship with humans. Rustlers, however, have been known to steal cattle. This is all insane. And in our number one spot today, we have Boyd Bushman and the UFO. During his interview, Boyd Bushman also revealed photos of real UFO spacecrafts that he saw while working at Area 51. Up close and personal, this is a UFO which is ready to take off. So that's a close-up photo of a UFO spacecraft taking off. Then he also showed a different photo of a UFO spacecraft with its lights turned off. What do you think though? Is Boyd telling the truth? Are those real photos of UFOs? Let me know in the comments below.